Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. One neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. It's easy to take the easy option. It's easy to rationalize. If no one around you is living at a high level, no one around you is achieving at the highest level, it might seem okay to take it easy. It's easy to get in a big, average, miserable rut. What's not easy is putting in the work when you don't feel like it. What's not easy is continuing to raise the bar when everyone around you remains the same. Not one's life is ever easy. How did you ever think you were ever going to make any progress? You can make this your time. You can take control of the life you want to live. Have the authority to know what you need to change. To know how to change and then to take action. Have discipline for yourself into progress. Switch your routine. Good people can't really handle them on the level that someone who's great is. So you're praying for greatness and a problem comes and you're running from the problem. You don't understand that it is in solving the problem that you become wealthy. You don't understand that when you solve that problem, you solve something that a two other million people couldn't solve. And so once you solved it, that solving the problem elevated you. There's so much knowledge out there, so much information, so many ways to get better. And we make we make so many mistakes. We're the we're the product of our mistakes. And oftentimes the lesson is sitting there right in front of our face. It's there to be learned, but we miss it or we don't pay attention to it or we think we know better until it punches us in the face. Be confident in your ability to overcome any challenge that comes your way. Why? Because your level of confidence is going to determine what you strive for. If you don't have confidence, what you'll do is you'll see something that you want, but you won't go for it because you'll tell yourself, I'm not cut out for this. I'm not good enough for this. I don't speak well enough for this. I'm not credentialed enough or I'm not qualified enough. And what you're doing is holding yourself back. Think about how can you do something different? We decided to take a risk and be different. So how can you be different in your category, in your career, in your, your field of interest, whatever you're doing, how can you purposefully choose to evolve and do something different? Because that's a risk. And sure, not all risks are rewarded, but I'll tell you what's never rewarded, stagnation. One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Part of the reason that people go watch anti-heroes and villains is because there's a part of them crying out for the incorporation of the monster within them, which is what gives them strength of character and self-respect, because it's impossible to respect yourself until you grow teeth. And if you grow teeth, then you realize that you're somewhat dangerous, and or maybe somewhat seriously dangerous, and then you might be more willing to demand that you treat yourself with respect and other people do the same thing. And so that doesn't mean that being cruel is better than not being cruel. What it means is that being able to be cruel and then not being cruel is better than not being able to be cruel. Because in the first case, you're nothing but weak and naive. And in the second case, you're dangerous, but you have it under control. And you know, a lot of martial arts concentrate on exactly that as part of their philosophy of training. It's like, we're not training you to fight. We're training you to be peaceful and awake and avoid fights. But if you happen to have to get in one, and, and I guess the philosophy also is, is that if you're competent at fighting, that actually decreases the probability that you're going to have to fight because when someone pushes you, you'll be able to respond with confidence 
And with any luck, and this is certainly the case with bullies, with any luck, a reasonable show of confidence, which is very much equivalent to a show of dominance, is going to be enough to make the bully back off. And so the strength that you develop in your monstrousness is actually the best guarantee of peace. And that's partly why Jung believed that it was necessary for people to integrate their shadow. And he said that was a terrible thing for people to attempt because the human shadow, <clears throat> which is all those things about yourself that you don't want to realize, reaches all the way to hell. And what he meant by that was it's through an analysis of your own shadow that you can come to understand why other people are capable, and you as well, of the sorts of terrible atrocities that characterize, let's say, the 20th century. And without that understanding, there's no possibility of bringing it under control. It's also partly why the path to enlightenment and wisdom is seldom trod upon, because if it was all a matter of following your bliss and doing what made you happy, then everyone in the world would be a paragon of wisdom, but it's not that at all. It's, the, it's a matter of facing the thing you least want to face as the gateway to wisdom and the gateway to the development of personality, which is exactly the same thing, is precisely through the portal, portal that you do not want to climb through. And the reason for that is actually quite technical. This is a union presupposition too, is that, well, there's a bunch of things about you that are underdeveloped, and a lot of those things are because they're things you've avoided looking at, because you don't want to look at them, and there's parts of you you've avoided developing because it's hard for you to develop those parts. And so it's, it's by virtual necessity that what you need is where you don't want to look because that's where you've kept it. The starting point of setting goals is for you to throw off all mental limitations and let your mind roam freely across the entire universe of possibilities. Your primary job at the beginning is to allow yourself to dream big dreams and determine exactly what it is you want out of life in every area and in every dimension. Decide what's right before you decide what's possible. Imagine that you can be or have or do virtually anything that you really want to, as long as you know exactly what it is. First, make up a dream list. Temporarily imagine that you have no limitations of time, money, knowledge, contacts, experience or education. Imagine that anything that you can write down is possible for you. Remember, anything that you can clearly define and crystallize on paper is probably possible if you want it long enough and hard enough and are willing to make whatever efforts and sacrifices are necessary. There are no unrealistic goals, only unrealistic timelines. The very act of writing your goals down sets the whole universe to work in your favor and activates all the mental laws to help you. In fact, many people have had the experience of writing out a list of goals on New Year's Day, putting them away and not referring to them again until the end of the year and then finding that 80% of the goals have been achieved, sometimes in the most amazing ways. The very act of writing down big, challenging goals causes three things to happen. First, your self-concept improves and your self-confidence goes up immediately. The act of setting goals requires self-confidence and simultaneously builds self-confidence. Having the courage to write down what you really want improves your self-image and raises your self-esteem. The action itself generates a feeling of greater personal power and ability. Second, tap into your mental and emotional powers. Goal setting actually gives you a burst of physical and mental energy. Your heart rate and your respiratory rate speed up. The very act of goal, setting is inherently exciting. It sounds a little corny, but someone once said feeling listless. Make a list, it's true. It's like stepping on the accelerator of your own mental and physical potential. And if you do it every day, the results can be amazing. Third, commit it to paper. The very fact that you have committed a goal to paper dramatically increases the likelihood that you will achieve that goal. Your mind is structured in such a way that you cannot write down a goal clearly on paper without simultaneously having the ability to somehow attain it. The most important question is, how badly do you want it? As soon as you plant the garden, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it. 
And you've got to learn not only to nourish your values, you've got to learn to do battle with your enemies. Whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility, but don't take anything off of anybody. Somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down, I'm telling you, walk away if you have to, walk away. Whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever threatens your opportunity, threaten it back. Now, some of our enemies are on the outside, but here's the most important thing to understand. Some of our enemies are on the inside. Let me give you a quick list. Indifference. You got to do battle with your own indifference. Boy, it's easy to coast, especially if you've accomplished something, you know, extraordinary now. Somebody says, well, I got to relax. Here's the key. Not too long. The weeds will take all you plant if you rest too long. Don't rest too long. Indecision. You got to make those decisions. The ones that don't turn out to be good gives you experience to make better decisions. Don't let much time go by without making some decisions. The ones that you can make quickly, make them quickly. The ones that take time, take your time. But get those decisions made. Don't let indecision be an enemy. Rob you of the future. Empty your bank account. Leave you with zero in the purse. Don't let that happen. The next one is doubt. But I'm asking you not to pick up all those doubts. I'm asking you to have some faith. Have some courage, believe, drive your doubts into a small corner. Don't let them loose like a mad dog, drive you into a small corner. Don't doubt the future. Don't doubt the possibilities. Here's the most important one of all. Don't doubt yourself. If I've got miracle working power to change my life, so do you. If I've got the ability to change, so do you. If I've got the ability to read, so do you. If I can discover, so can you. If I can grow, you can grow. If I can develop, you can develop. If I can get an invitation like I got six years ago, help take something around the world, so can you. If I can stand on this platform, Idaho farm boy raising obscurity, so can you. I'm asking you, don't sell yourself short.